Hey everyone. So I want to address a question that I get all the time from friends, family, and a bunch of you on the internet, which is, if EVs are the future, then why not just invest in already established automakers like Ford or GM or Volkswagen? And I actually think it's a really good question, and I'm not saying I have the right answer, which is part of why I wanted to make this video so that we could talk about our opinions. And a really similar question was asked on CNBC to Tim Higgins of the Wall Street Journal. But before we get to his answer, I want to let you in on a great way to help out the channel and get yourself up to two free stocks. Webull, the stock trading app, is currently offering two free stocks just for opening an account and making a $100 deposit if you're in the US. If you're interested, click the link in the description for more information. All right, let's hear what the Wall Street Journal's Tim Higgins has to say about EVs. And that's what electric cars are really about right now. It's a huge bet that the world is going to change in the coming years and that electric cars are going to be the winner. Okay, I'm going to let him answer the rest of the question, but I need to address the idea posed by Tim here, which is that there's going to be a huge change with regards to personal transportation in the coming years, and that change is going to be electric vehicles, and that's the bet. That might be the wrong way to phrase it. I think just about everyone who's knowledgeable on the subject agrees that electric vehicles are going to be the future of transportation, especially in the consumer market. I don't think there's a whole lot of question there. The bet, if you want to call it that, is which companies are going to succeed in this rapidly shifting market. The bet isn't if electric vehicles are the future. The bet is electric vehicles are the future, which companies will succeed in this future. It might seem like semantics, but I think there's a profound difference in those two answers. Anyways, let's hear the rest of what he has to say. And does it have to be uh, the sort of independent electric car stocks that, that uh, take part in this victory? Or can the traditional players start to grab more of the market and therefore take some of the wind out of the sails of these valuations? Well, I think that's what right now what you're seeing is this bet that these upstarts are the ones that are going to be the winners, right? And that's been the frustration of Detroit and, and Stuttgart and Toyota City over the years, that they're not getting the kind of credit that they deserve for all of the manufacturing muscle that they have. And, and that gets at the, kind of the trouble and the, the, the challenge that these startups have. And so there's somewhat of an answer, but let's expand on it. Let's get the most simple thing out of the way first. If you want to invest in electric vehicles, can you put your money into legacy automotive manufacturers like Volkswagen or GM? or Toyota? Yes, you can. Virtually every major automotive manufacturer is either selling or has plans to sell EVs in the near term future. So in that regard, you can technically invest in EVs through legacy automotive manufacturers. But if you're really wanting to be investing primarily into the electric vehicle revolution that's occurring, are these legacy companies your best bet? In my opinion, no, no they aren't. And here's why. Change takes time, and generally speaking, the larger, older, and more established the company is, the more difficult it is to make change, especially when that change is so dramatic. When you have a massive old company that's been around for close to a century, like a lot of these manufacturers have been, then making a radical company-wide change is difficult. You have shareholders and you have the board of directors and everybody wants to see safe and regular returns on their investment. They want to see their dividends paid out. They didn't start investing in this company to see major risks being taken. These are slow growth stocks. These things and others can deter big companies from taking massive and decisive action in timely manners. It's the slow grind of bureaucracy. And this is part of the reason why even though Tesla came out with the Model S in 2012 and it absolutely destroyed the competition and made it clear to anyone who was paying attention that the way forward was electric, it still took so many of these automotive manufacturers years to come out with their own compelling EVs. And I would argue that they're still years behind where Tesla is today. You would think, just looking at it, that a company like GM, who has more than twice as many employees as Tesla, could put all that engineering and manufacturing prowess to work and within a relatively short time frame, beat Tesla at their own game. They've got the experience, they've got the cash flow, they've got the talent, so what's the problem? Well, there's a bunch of them. One of the reasons is that although we might think that people and machinery and capital are fluid and they can change from job to job relatively easily, that isn't always the case. And the older and 
and more established the company, generally speaking, the less fluid they become. But also let's go through some quick calculations. And this is gonna be really rough math, but it should help shine some light on the issue. GM employs somewhere around 150,000 people worldwide. Tesla employs 70,000. So you might think just in sheer employee work potential that GM should be able to make up ground on Tesla because in theory, they can get twice as much done. But let's look at it like this. Tesla produces 100% EVs. Now, they also do solar and battery storage solutions and some other things, but as far as cars, they only make EVs. GM, on the other hand, makes almost entirely traditional combustion engines, so the majority of their efforts have been going towards those models. And GM obviously has to worry about those ICE sales, as right now the vast majority of their revenue is coming from them. And not only are their revenues almost entirely from internal combustion engine vehicles, but their high margin products, which are trucks and SUVs, are still relatively unproven territory for EVs. We have the Cybertruck and the Rivian and the Hummer EV, but none of which have actually hit the market. And even though GM is planning on selling 1 million EVs in 2025, that's still only going to be around 10 to 15% of their fleet. So now if we look at that workforce of 150,000 people that GM employs, but the majority of their efforts are still on their primary business of internal combustion vehicles. Even though Tesla has half the employees, their focus is directly on electric vehicles. Another massive problem that these legacy automotive makers have, especially in the United States right now, is their sales model. Right now, if you wanna buy a new Ford or Chevy in the US, you go to a dealership. In most places in the US, it's actually the law. I've covered this extensively in other videos. I'll leave this one linked if you want more details. But to keep things short and sweet, over the last 100 years or so, through car manufacturers and dealerships lobbying the government, laws have been put in place to create virtual monopolies on new car sales. Now, I have my issues with dealerships, as to almost everyone. An auto trader survey showed that only 17 out of 4,000 people liked buying cars through dealerships. But there's another problem that the dealership model brings around. Half of the dealership's revenue is earned via services such as oil changes and engine air filters and spark plugs and transmission fluid and all that sort of things. But EVs don't need those kinds of services. So the dealerships stand to lose a significant amount of their revenue by switching to EVs. So if the dealership realizes that they won't make nearly as much revenue selling EVs, they aren't going to be motivated to educate consumers on electric vehicles. And let me tell you, dealerships have realized that. I've done so many videos about how car dealerships are spreading lies and misinformation about electric vehicles. Now you could say they were honest mistakes made by the dealerships, but I guess I'm just a little bit more skeptical. I've followed the money and I've seen exactly where it goes. But there's another problem. One of the main reasons that the dealership model became popular was because it allowed the dealership to focus on region-specific marketing tactics, while the car manufacturer could focus on just making the cars. Dealerships spend massive amounts on advertising, but what happens if the dealerships don't want to push electric vehicle sales because it means a major hit to their bottom line because of the lack of follow-up and service revenue? It really puts everyone in a tricky situation. I have no doubt that over time these issues will be sorted out, but in the short to midterm, it's already been and will continue to be a major issue. We've even seen recently with the Ford Mach-E lineup, which is their electric lineup that launched recently, and Ford's dealerships have been marking them up by up to $15,000 due to lack of supply. The dealership can just raise the price for the supply-constrained EVs and then pocket that extra margin. And this isn't a new problem. In the 90s, Ford even tried to create its own direct sales model called the Ford Retailer Network. Work. They tried to work through the legal system, but after over a decade of fighting legal battles, Ford gave up in 2003. Texas courts said that Ford making direct sales to consumers was illegal. The legal argument was that the dealerships could not compete against the car manufacturer's pricing. Laws have been changing in the US in large part due to Tesla's direct sales model, but these things take time and it's another source of friction to slow the transition over to electric vehicles. My point being, yes, obviously Legacy Auto can and will sell electric vehicles and some of them are going to be successful, but it takes a little time sometime to turn the Titanic around. And in the time it takes for Legacy Auto to get their ducks in a row, there have been gaps left open that these startups can fill. Consumers are demanding electric vehicles and many of the offerings that traditional automotive manufacturers have presented just aren't good enough, plain and simple.
Anyways, those are my thoughts on the consumer electric vehicle market. What do you think about investing in legacy automotive manufacturers if you're hoping to invest in electric vehicles? Let me know in the comments section below. All right, and my favorite comment from the last video, which was about Nikola Motors' newly redesigned trucks, says, last time I was this early, you got a copyright strike from Nikola. All right, I'll see you all later.